Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. In my last video, I showed you how to take an installation of Debian, pure Debian that is, how to partition the drive and add Arch Linux to it as a dual boot. And today I'm going to talk a bit more about that, focusing on partitioning the drive. So let's get to it. So this is the video I'm referring to. And if you didn't watch it, please go ahead and watch it. And in the video, like I said in my introduction, I took a virtual machine of Debian, pure Debian, I partitioned the drive, and I added Arch Linux to it. And like I mentioned in the video, you can do that in bare metal computer, but I did it in a virtual machine. In that video, I explained to open your web browser, go to Gparted website, download the ISO, which was about uh, 500 megabytes, put it onto a thumb drive, the same way that you would do with a distribution ISO. And then I told you to boot onto that thumb drive and to partition your Debian installation and then to power down and to unplug it and to plug in a second USB thumb drive that has the Arch Linux ISO on it, boot into it and install Arch Linux on it. And I showed you how to do some prep work in the terminal before we started Arch install, the automated Arch Linux installer. And I showed you how to do some post work in the terminal after Arch Linux was installed so that when you boot into the system, the menu would give you the option of booting into Debian, pure Debian that is, or Arch, pure Arch. Like I said in the video, you're going to need two thumb drives for Gparted ISO and one thumb drive for the Arch Linux ISO. Now, somebody uh, wrote a comment in saying, why don't you just use GNOME disks? to partition your drive, and then you only have to use one thumb drive, and that's for the Arch Linux ISO. Save yourself some work, and save yourself a thumb drive. You don't have to use two thumb drives. And this is the reason why I didn't use GNOME disks. First reason is, I didn't think of it. <laughs> so GNOME disks is a great utility. I do use the GNOME disk utility, sometimes when I wanna format a thumb drive, or I want to make a thumb drive usable in both Windows and Linux, or sometimes I use GNOME disks when I want to make a bootable live ISO onto a thumb drive, I'll use GNOME disks, and I don't feel like using the terminal or doing it in the terminal. I always knew that GNOME disks had a way to partition drives, but I never used it. So now I've used it, and I'm going to explain why you shouldn't use it for this particular purpose. How do you like my computer? Really nice, eh? Hope you like the artwork. <laughs> Sorry. If you have an Arch Linux in computer and you want to install pure Debian as a dual boot or Linux Mint as a dual boot, you don't have to do any prep work and it's really easy. I mean, all you have to do is take the uh, live ISO for Debian, pure Debian that is, or the live ISO for Linux Mint, put it onto a thumb drive, plug it in, boot onto it, go through the install, and when it's going through the install, it's going to give you a graphical tool to do the install, and it's going to recognize that you have an installation already there, Arch Linux. And it's going to ask you if you want to uh, wipe out Arch Linux and use your full drive for the new installation of Debian or Linux Mint, or it's going to ask you if you want to do a dual boot. And if you click on yes, you want to do a dual boot, it's really easy. Now, I do want to say that the Debian installer is not as easy as the Linux Mint because the Linux Mint uses the Columarius installer. And many Linux distributions use the Columarius installer, not all Linux distributions. And the Columarius installer that Linux Mint uses is really easy. So when you click on Yes to partition the drive, a field comes up and you can use your mouse or your keyboard to make your existing Arch Linux drive smaller and to free up space for the new installation. And it's and the Calamaries installer that Linux Mint uses, it's so easy to use, it's almost not worth it making a video about it, even though I might. And before you start the installation, you don't have to do any prep work or anything in the terminal. And when the installation is finished, you don't have to do any post work in the terminal. So Linux Mint is so easy in the Columaries installer to partition your drive and you don't damage the existing drive of Arch Linux. And afterwards, 
automatically when you boot into your new installation the boot menu is automatically going to give you the choice of booting into arch linux or linux mint it's so easy now the debian installer is also easy but not as easy so the debian installer uses a graphical installer as well but it's not the calamari's installer and yes it recognizes that you have another installation like arch linux installed and it will ask you if you want to use your whole drive like wipe out arch and use the whole drive for debian or if you want to put debian alongside of it and then you end up on another screen where you can partition the drive you can shrink down your arch linux drive and use your new space for debian but this part of the installer it's not as user friendly or as easy to use as the one that's in Linux Mint, the Calamari's installer. But it is easier to use than what I did in my last video. The Debian installer, like the Linux Mint installer, the Calamari's installer, the Debian installer, you don't have to do any prep work beforehand or any post work in the terminal afterwards. When the installation is finished, your menu is going to come up when you're booting into your system. The menu is going to come up and it's going to give you the option of booting into Debian or Arch Linux. So I would say that the Debian installer is easier to use than what I did in my last video. But the easiest is using the Calamari's installer, whether you're using the Calamari's installer in Linux Mint or in another Linux distribution. So in my last video, the one I just showed you, I had Debian, pure Debian installed in my computer well it was a virtual machine but the same thing <laughs> okay and i added arch linux to it so this is a whole different ball game because now in that video i used the arch linux automated installer that's like only three or four years old and of course it's not called the arch linux automated installer i gave it that name <laughs> it's called arch install but the arch install is not as user friendly or as and not as sophisticated as the Calamari's installer that's used by uh, Linux Mint and many other Linux distributions. If you just go through a straight installation using Arch install or the Arch Linux automated installer, what it's going to do, it's going to wipe out your Debian and it's going to use the whole drive for Arch Linux and your Debian will be gone or your Linux Mint or whatever happens to be in there. So you have to partition the drive ahead of time. Now you can't partition the drive using CF disk as far as I know, because when I tried it, it wiped out my Debian installation. So like I already mentioned, what I did in my last video, I downloaded the ISO of Gparted. I put it onto a thumb drive just as if it was a Linux distribution in the same manner. And I had a second thumb drive or the Arch Linux ISO. Plug the thumb drive in, boot into the system, partition your drive, shut down, and then you put your Arch Linux thumb drive in, boot into that, and go through your installation. And of course, there was some prep work to do in the terminal before we started the Arch Linux installer. And there was some post work to do in the terminal afterwards that both the Debian and the Arch Linux would show up in our boot menu when we were booting into the system. Now, the reason why I didn't use the GNOME disk utility is first of all, well, it didn't really occur to me. But also secondly, I did some experimenting with it and it doesn't work. I don't want to say it doesn't work. That's not right. So first of all, GNOME Disk Utility is a fantastic utility. And I use it for other functions like I mentioned earlier in the video. And GNOME Disk Utility is available in every Linux distribution. And in some Linux distributions, it comes automatically installed. Like if you install Linux Mint, you're going to automatically have GNOME Disk Utility installed. Now, if you installed pure Arch Linux and you used my post install script, you're also going to have GNOME Disk Utility installed. But the thing is, is that if you log into your Debian system and go into and open up GNOME Disk Utility, it will not let you partition the drive because you're booted onto it or you're mounted onto it. GNOME Disk Utility will only let you partition a drive that is unmounted or that you're not booted onto. So you can't just open up your Debian uh, computer open up disk utility gnome disk utility and partition the drive it won't work it'll get stuck now you could take a thumb drive that has the live iso of linux mint on it boot into it open up gnome disk utility and partition the drive power down and then put your uh, arch linux thumb drive in boot into it and go through an installation with the pre changes i made in the terminal and the post changes i made in the terminal just like i did in the other video you could do that, 
But if you do that, you still have to use two thumb drives, right? One thumb drive is going to have Linux Mint on it. The second thumb drive is going to have Arch Linux on it. You still have to use two thumb drives. Now, you can't use the Debian thumb drive to boot onto it and partition the drive because Debian doesn't take you into a live environment. Now, I use the um, Debian ISO that does a net install. So I suppose, because Debian has a lot of um, different types of ISOs you can download and boot onto. So if you boot onto a Debian ISO that allows you to go into a live environment, then you can do that. You can use that to partition your drive, boot onto that thumb drive, partition your drive, and then unplug it, boot into the Arch Linux ISO and go through an install. You could do that. But the Debian ISO I used was only, I think, uh, 700 megabytes or 800 megabytes because it's a really small ISO and it doesn't allow you to go into a live environment and play with the system or experiment with the system. It just takes you automatically into the installer. But even that, even if you use a Debian ISO that takes you into a live uh, environment, you're still using two thumb drives. Now, the reason why I didn't use the Arch Linux ISO it's like I said, the Arch Linux ISO doesn't take you into uh, an environment where you can play with Arch Linux, download graphical programs onto it, and use it. If it did, then I would have just opened up, uh, downloaded, and opened up uh, GNOME Disk Utility and used it. So either way, I don't see any, any way out of the situation where you don't have to use two thumb drives. Not when you're going this way. When you have Debian or Linux Mint or some other easy, user-friendly, easy-to-use Linux distribution, and you want to install Arch Linux as a uh, dual boot, you can't boot into the system and partition the drive. That's why I did it the way I did, and I'm just going to show you. So right now, I'm in a virtual machine of Arch Linux, pure Arch Linux, with the awesome window manager. And like I said, GNOME Disk Utility is available in every distribution and many distributions it comes installed by default. And for sure, if you install Linux Mint, you're going to have it installed. And if you install Pure Debian, if it's not installed, you can easily install it. And if you installed Pure Arch Linux and you used my post-installation scripts, you're going to have it installed as well. So what we want to do is right click here and let's open up disks. And here we are here. So we're going to click this on. So we can see I have a 54 gigabyte drive in this virtual machine of Arch Linux. So here you can see highlighted. I have, and it's kind of small. And unfortunately on this page, you can't make it larger. I don't like to have small font in my videos because it doesn't always show up properly on the video once it's on YouTube. So anyways, this highlighted space is 3.1 megabytes of free space. This file system, it's one gigabyte for my boot partition. And this is my main partition, which is 53 gigabytes. And this is where my Arch Linux installation is installed. Now, I didn't make these partitions because when I did the installation for this virtual machine, I used the Arch Linux automated installer called Arch Install. I didn't manually install Arch Linux in this virtual machine. And most of the time, when I'm, because I'm always making virtual machines and after I use them for videos, a lot of times I delete them because I make all kinds of changes in them. A lot of times I delete them. So I'm always making new uh, virtual machines of Arch Linux and I'm not gonna manually type in all the commands and do it the manual way every time. <laughs> That's too much work, <laughs> okay? Even though I can do a manual install in about 20 minutes, half an hour at the most. <laughs> so anyway, that's besides the point. So I'm just gonna show you how you can't use GNOME Disk to partition a drive while you're mounted onto it or while you're logged onto it or inside of it. I'm going to click on this one here. I'm going to click on resize. We can see the partition size is 52.6 gigabytes. Free space following. So let's, can I free up 25? Let's split this uh, hard drive in half or let's partition this drive in half. Okay, so let's make it 25.3. Okay, and let's click on this resize button. So it's asking for my password. Let's put my password in. Let's click OK. See, error, unmounting file system. Error, unmounting, dev VDA2, target is busy. So you can't partition it because we're logged into it. So that's why I recommend that if you have a Debian installation or a Linux Mint installation and you want to do a boot and add Arch to it, 
you should have two thumb drives. Now you could have one thumb drive with Linux Mint into it. And like I said, boot onto it, partition it, and then put your thumb drive with Arch into it and boot into that and do your install. But like I said, you're gonna need two thumb drives. You're gonna need one thumb drive with Linux Mint on it or some other Linux distribution that allows you to go into a live environment and that comes with GNOME disks already installed on the thumb drive. Or you can just do it the way I did it and download an ISO of Gparted and put it onto the thumb drive. But you're gonna have to use two thumb drives. And like I already mentioned, if you're going the other way around and you have an Arch installation and you're gonna install Debian, Mint, or some other Linux distribution, they're gonna make it easy you don't have to do anything. Just plug in your thumb drive, go through your install because they're going to install the system for you, okay? And going this way, you won't have to do any pre-configuration in the terminal or post-configuration in the terminal. Everything's gonna show up in the Grub menu. And that's it. In this video, I talked about my last video where I took a pure Debian installation and added Arch Linux to it as a dual boot and explained why I used two thumb drives, one thumb drive with Gparted and another thumb drive with the Arch Linux ISO and why I didn't use GNOME disks and why I used two thumb drives and not one. And I also explained the difference between doing that, going, adding Arch to a Debian installation or a Linux Mint installation and the difference between doing that and adding Debian or Linux Mint to an Arch install which is a lot easier going that way. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like it, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Lennox Mensch.